from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading on this Easter Sunday comes from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. In the first reading, we saw how the story of Jesus here on earth, according to human uh, standards and estimation, should have ended on the cross, his death, and his burial. But God continues the story in his resurrection. And the life that Jesus now lives in his recent life is life in God. Now, in the second reading, we are given this deep mystery of our participation in the risen life of Christ. According to St. Paul, we have all died already. We have all died in Christ. Oh, so when Jesus died on the cross, he was not just an individual who experiences his death. Jesus there, dying on the cross, was the bearer of the whole of humanity. We all died in Him. So our old persons have died with Him. But just like the story of Jesus, his, our story continues. We do not end with death. There is life in Christ also. We belong not only to Jesus' dying, we belong to Jesus' rising to life in God. We are in Jesus' company. My dear brothers and sisters, we have not given sufficient time to reflect on this. May I invite you on this Easter Sunday to dwell on this truth, that we are already in the company of the risen Lord. And so St. Paul is able to tell the Colossians, your life is already hidden with Christ. In God. The life that we see in our day-to-day -day existence is the visible life. We wake up, we are concerned about many things, we address concerns and problems, we study, we work, we earn, we get sick, <laughs> and then we go back to, to uh, back home, we sleep, we rest. These are the visible things in life. But there is a hidden life. The hidden life that we share with Christ who is seated at the right hand of the Father. That is also real life for us. We already share in God's life thanks to Jesus. Please believe in it. Otherwise, the resurrection of Christ amounts to nothing. We really share in divine life. That's why St. Paul tells the Colossians, we should be concerned about things of heaven, things that are above, meaning, since we have a life in God, our concern should be godly, not sinful concerns, not to the concerns that should have been dead already in Christ. So the resurrection according to the first reading, leads us to forgiveness of sins. Now, here in the second reading, there is a, a moral imperative. Because of Christ's resurrection and our sharing in His new life, which is life in God, our concern should be godly. So, dear brothers and sisters, let us not turn Easter into just a day of rest or a day of vacationing or a day to enjoy. While all of those are, are good in themselves, let this day be, first of all, a celebration not only of our physical earthly life, but 
the true life in God that we possess now, thanks to Jesus Christ. And let that also lead us to a resolve that we will not waste that divine life in us. Our concerns in daily living should also be the concerns of God. That is how people will see that Christ is truly risen when we who profess to share in His life are really holy, godly, truthful, just, loving, peace-loving people because we possess the life of God.